If you look on Twitter or anytime I've posted about this on any social media platform, one of the most engaged threads that I've ever had or posts that I've done in terms of comments is talking about the removal of seed oils from the human diet, from individuals' diets, and how much less likely they are to get burned. I've had Tucker Goodrich on the show a number of times talking about seed oils. He has shared his own personal anecdotes. Tucker's quite fair-skinned. And if you look on Twitter, there are so many threads about this. Just ask your friends, or I can put a post on Twitter and you guys can see this, who out there is getting burned less when they've eliminated seed oils from their diet? And there's a good reason for this. The mechanistic hypothesis would be that when you eat seed oils, which are corn, canola, sunflower, safflower, soybean, peanut, etc., these are enriched in omega-6 linoleic acid. So this is an 18-carbon polyunsaturated fatty acid found in 20 to 30% in canola oil, 35% in corn and peanut, 45 to 55% in soybean oil. Different oils have different amounts of linoleic acid. But what we know about humans that's different than other animals is that when humans eat linoleic acid, it gets stuck in our membranes. We store it. So especially your fat cells, which is really the only way to look at your stores as a reflection of your consumption of linoleic acid. This is a problem with most of the research on linoleic acid. I've spoken about that in the past on previous podcasts. But what we know is that when you eat linoleic acid, whether it's your corn chips, your chips and guac, your queso, whatever, uh, your refried beans with seed oils, all sorts of things have seed oils hiding in them, your chipotle, uh, you are accumulating that linoleic acid in your cell membrane. So the more seed oils you eat, the more linoleic acid will be in your cell membranes. Well, guess what? <laughs> your skin is one massive collection of cell membranes. This is a phospholipid bilayer that is facing the sun. So just like your gut, is a single layer of cells, and all cells in the human body have a phospholipid bilayer, meaning two phospholipids kind of facing tail to tail with one side of the phospholipid bilayer facing the inside of the cell and the other side of the phospholipid bilayer facing out into the environment. Well, on your skin, that environment is your actual outside environment with sunlight hitting it. In your gut, it's the inside of your gut with all of those potentially damaging compounds from plants, this is a hypothesis that I've talked about many times in the past, hitting your gut epithelium. So this is the idea that these cells, if they are enriched in linoleic acid, well, linoleic acid is a polyunsaturated fatty acid that is much more susceptible to oxidation. That's just basic organic chemistry. If you take a bottle of linoleic acid, which is 18 carbon omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acid, and you put it next to a bottle of a saturated fat like palmitic or stearic acid, you can look for indices of oxidation in those two oils over time with pressure, heat, whatever, light. And the linoleic acid will oxidize much more quickly than a stearic acid, a palmitic acid, which are saturated fats. As an aside, this is why I'm not a fan of cooking with olive oil. Though olive oil is mostly monounsaturated, it still has a lot of unsaturated oils, this monounsaturated fat, oleic acid, and it contains a significant amount of linoleic acid. So 15, 20% linoleic acid. Much better fats to cook with are things like tallow, which have less monounsaturated fat, way more saturated fat, and very small amounts of linoleic acid. For reference, tallow has around 2% or less linoleic acid. Butter is about 2%, relative to 20, 30, 40, 50% linoleic acid in the seed oils I described earlier. So think about the oils you're eating and how that's creating the cell membranes in your body and how fragile those cell membranes can become when they are enriched in linoleic acid. What sort of research do we have to back this up? Well, mechanistically, I think all that makes a lot of sense, but there is some very interesting research about this that I will show you guys now, looking at the fats that people are eating and the incidence of skin cancer and looking at moisturizers that are put on the skin and what happens when you put linoleic acid directly onto the skin. So the conversation to this point has been what happens when you eat linoleic acid, you will populate the cell membranes from the inside out meaning that you will digest the linoleic acid and all the cells of your body will become enriched in linoleic acid, including the cells of your skin. But putting linoleic acid containing oils of any significant amount on your skin is probably a horrible, horrible idea. And what is the base of most sunscreens? It's sunflower oil, raspberry seed oil, argon oil, jojoba, whatever oil that has a significant amount of linoleic acid. Look at your sunscreen almost certainly it contains a high linoleic acid seed oil that's going on your skin. And I will show you research in a moment that putting linoleic acid on your skin leads to 
increased inflammatory markers. Yet, this is what's in your moisturizer, this is what's in your sunscreen, and this is why we need to be careful of what we put on our skin. So let's start with this study. The title is Fat Intake and Risk of Skin Cancer in U.S. Adults. It's from uh, 2018, Cancer Epidemiology Biomarkers. The results clearly show that increased consumption of polyunsaturated fats, higher intake of omega-6 fat, was associated with increased risks of squamous cell, basal cell, and melanoma. Omega-3 fat intake was associated with risk of basal cell carcinoma and... Uh, not with squamous or melanoma. No other fats were associated with melanoma risk. The associations were similar in men and women. Now, the conclusion is very clear. Polyunsaturated fat intake, modestly associated with increased skin cancer risk. I believe the increase in risk was around 18%, but it was statistically significant. This is epidemiology, so you can't draw causative inference, but I have trouble making any sort of other... <laughs> explanation for this. So this gets into complex discussions of epidemiology, observational studies, and what they mean. We probably just need to do an interventional study here, but it's going to be a very hard thing to study in interventional studies. Now, the problem here that I see in any sort of alternative explanation is that generally what we know from other research is that people who are eating polyunsaturated fats are trying to be healthy because we've been told that polyunsaturated fats are healthy. I think this is wrong advice for the last 70 years. So people that are eating polyunsaturated fats are doing other healthy behaviors. They're probably in the sun less than people who are eating saturated fat, who don't care about these things. They probably use more sunscreen than people who eat saturated fat. Generally, if you look at the westernized world, people that eat saturated fat are are having other unhealthy behaviors because they're disregarding the quote mainstream health advice. I believe that saturated fat is healthy for them, but they're doing other unhealthy behaviors. Things like riding motorcycles, drinking alcohol, not going to doctors, et cetera, et cetera. And people that are eating more unsaturated fat are putting canola oil on their salad, thinking they're doing the right thing and associating that with other health behaviors. So when things like this come up, I think that's a really compelling finding because generally people that have more unsaturated fat in their diet are listening to mainstream health advice, incorrect health advice, be it as it may, but they're listening to mainstream health advice and doing other healthy behaviors. So to see that association makes me very concerned that there is an actual mechanism happening here. And this next study that I'll show you makes that even more clear because it's an interventional study. So this is one of the coolest studies I've seen in a while, lipid ingredients in moisturizers. So we're not talking about sunscreen now, we're talking about moisturizers can modulate skin responses to ultraviolet light in barrier disrupted human skin in vivo, which means in the human body. This is an interventional study. And what did they do? They put a couple of different things on the skin and they looked at the inflammatory responses. So linoleic acid caused increased inflammation in the skin. So clear evidence that putting linoleic acid on your skin is harmful for you. The other study showed that people who were eating more linoleic acid had more skin cancer. So one is going from the inside, this one is going from the outside, but the mechanism is probably the same. Interestingly, in this study, they found that putting cholesterol on the skin, do you wanna take a guess? That decreased inflammation in the skin, probably because cholesterol is a key part of your cell membranes as well. But wait, Paul, isn't cholesterol bad for you? Listen to last week's podcast, guys. Listen to all the podcasts I've done on lipids and why I'm not worried about it. Obviously, this is cholesterol going on your skin as opposed to in your body. But I think that in general, it's another interesting point to suggest that cholesterol is a valuable molecule for humans. When you are making cholesterol in your liver, a pathway you wouldn't want to disrupt with something like a statin, you are putting that in your cell membranes. You are using that cholesterol to make hormones in your body, all essential, beneficial things. How does that cholesterol move in your body? Oh, a little molecule called LDL, which is, yes, an ApoB containing lipoprotein that most people in the health space think is harmful for you. I think that makes absolutely no sense, and I've spoken about why and shown data on previous podcasts about LDL and ApoB, et cetera. But interesting study to show that putting cholesterol on your skin can cause decreased inflammation. And in this study, they also note that statin users have higher rates of skin cancer. That's a side effects of statin use that I've never heard anyone talk about. But it makes sense because cholesterol being made by your liver as a valuable portion of human nutrition, of human physiology, goes into your cell membranes and has a protective effect in those membranes, interrupting the formation of cholesterol with a statin, a pharmaceutical drug that inhibits an enzyme called HMG CoA reductase. That is associated with an increased rate of skin cancer. Again, it's only an association, but 
That's a compelling association that should make us very curious and maybe get us thinking about not fearing cholesterol so much. Perhaps we should be celebrating this. Obviously, context matters and the context should always be thought of how metabolically healthy you are. If you have questions about metabolic health, go back and listen to last week's podcast on my blood work where I talk about that in more detail. Here's one more study which I found very compelling. The title is Melanoma and Dietary Lipids. And what we see here is that in people who had more linoleic acid in their fatty tissue, which is a good indicator of linoleic acid consumption. So this is not the same type of observational study where they are asking people what they eat. They're actually sampling the linoleic acid in the fatty tissue. They see a clear correlation with increased melanoma in people who have more linoleic acid in the fat. Linoleic acid in the fat is a clear indicator of how much linoleic acid you've eaten. So eating more linoleic acid is associated with worse melanoma in these people. That's pretty scary, but again, but it supports the same idea that I've been discussing that what you eat can affect your cell membranes and having more polyunsaturated fatty acids in your cell membranes can affect your risk of cancers, can be a risk factor or directly connected when you apply linoleic acid to inflammation in your skin, which is almost certainly a precursor for skin cancers, aging. Inflammation in your skin is not a good thing at all in any way, shape or form. No one listening to this, I think, would believe that inflammation in the skin would be a good thing. So. Those are three really compelling studies that make me curious and very concerned about either application of linoleic acid to my skin or consumption of linoleic acid from a skin health perspective. But your mainstream doctor would probably never tell you to avoid canola oil. Maybe it's good you're listening to this podcast.